Friday, 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 Friday it is. This is the last, uh, the first day of the weekend and we are very grateful. Uh, we are grateful that the Lord has been good. I've always said this a day that we start now thinking and looking back and asking ourselves the golden questions. How have we fared? How have we fared? What have we learned in the entire week? What have we not done that we were supposed to have done? Or what did we do that we are not supposed to have done? It is a time of taking stocks for the week. And by the way, that as we drift now to Sabbath, to the time of rest, and even a time of uh, remembering the resurrection of Jesus and the glorious power that Christ is able to do and overcome every kind of challenge, that even as we go through that time, is like it helps us that we may be able to find a time of reflection, a time of restoration, and a time that we can be able to find the divine visitation of God to empower us for the next coming week. Did you hear what I said? Friday is a day of taking stocks. Then even as we go through the calm Saturday, we continue putting things in place, what we were supposed not to have done. And even we are able to repent where we need to repent. We are able to strengthen ourselves where we need to strengthen ourselves. We are able to thank God for the things that he has been able and enables us to do. It's a time of taking time to reflect so that we may become better people as we step out even to the next week. So that Sunday as we get into the place of worship, we are able to tell the Lord, this is what we desire. This is what we thank you for. This is how we wish that you help us that this coming week we may become better vessels, better people, effective men and women to perform and fulfill the cause that is already trusted in our hands. How we become fruitful in our business, become fruitful in our careers, how we'll be able to become fruitful in our marriages, in our families, and in our parenting, even fruitful in the ministry of the kingdom. And having said that, I wish you a blessed weekend, even as we share the word of God, even this morning. Now, brethren, it has been a journey of always being able this week to pick up what the Holy Spirit does and what the Holy Spirit enables. The benefit of the power and the gift of the Holy Spirit to us in fulfilling the cause of reaching out with the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And we have been able to mention several and today, I want us to pick up that the Holy Spirit is able to teach us to love as God. Now, did you hear that? That the Holy Spirit teaches us to love as God's love. You know, it's so amazing that the basics and the foundation of the gospel of Christ and especially the good news of salvation to all humankind, it is founded in the love of God. Founded in love. By the way, the ABC of the issues of the kingdom of God, it's all about love. No wonder, even somebody was talking to me uh, two, weeks, two, two days ago, and he was telling me about how marvelous it is that love covers a multitude of sin. That love covers a multitude of sin. And you know, that is the only thing I've ever heard in the scriptures that covers sin. Sins is repented. Sins is taken away by sacrifices. In the Old Testament, people had to give sacrifices. In the New Testament, the sacrifice of Jesus, he died so that we may be atoned of our sins. But you realize that the Bible comes and says in the New Testament that love covers a multitude of sin. Love is powerful. No wonder Solomon says that love is as powerful as death. Love is as powerful as death. So the truth is, when we talk about anything to do with the gospel, it can never be done unless in love. No wonder, even the Ten Commandments, 
When Jesus was asked this very tricky question by the scribes and the Pharisees, men that were wise in the issues of the law, and they said, which is the greatest commandment? Which is the greatest commandment? And he said, the greatest commandment. And now they were waiting to capture him because they knew there was no other commandment that was greater than others. When they started him, started talking, they were so excited. They knew that this is the day we are going to catch on him. But he just said, this is the greatest commandment. Love your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, and with all your strength. And love your neighbor as yourself. And he says it fulfills the law of Moses and even all the works of the prophets. And they were silent. In other words, Christ summarized all the Decalogue with love. Love God, love your neighbor, period. You cannot be able to go to men leaching them with God's word if you don't love them. It's irony of the highest order. It can only work when you show you care. Ask me, I'll tell you, women will always say they don't believe you love them if you don't care for them, if you don't care. Men will tell you for them they know that love is about respect. Did you ever know, me, I'm a very against person about sometimes how people, they may say that they are able, they are helping out people deliver them from bondages, and they are beating them, they are slapping them. That one, that I can say with capital letters, that one, it is not in the basis of what we know. Jesus never slapped anybody to remove any kind of a demon. Even that demon that was tried by all magicians, including doctors, because they were called physicians and all this stuff. By the way, it's good to know that God has never dehumanized any human being to deliver them. He has never opened their nakedness for them to help, to get help. As a matter of fact, the love of God is about covering our shame that we may find help. That's why today I want to remind us that the one who teaches us to love as God loves, because humanly, we are not able to love. By the way, you see small children, when even they are born, we are born with a selfish, we are born with a very selfish attitude and spirit. We want everything to ourselves. We want everything. Everything is mine. Everything. You see, when toddlers are growing, you realize all the toys in the house, they are theirs. Everything, they are theirs. They want the tea of their father. They want the bread of their, they leave their bread. They want to eat the bread of their father or their mother and all this stuff. But the truth is, when the Holy Spirit comes upon us, one of the greatest things that the Holy Spirit does so that we may become men and women that are effective to reaching out is to teach us the love of God. One, the love of God is sacrificial. It is not selfish, but sacrificial. The Lord teaches us that we must learn to give our time. We are supposed to give, sacrifice our positions, our status, we don't want to feel so important and good that we cannot even reach out to the less, even to those people who are in the lower cadre of our place of employment, that we show love to the gate man, that every morning when you are getting in, you have not just pulled up your, 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 your screens of the windows which are also tinted. They have never even seen your face. And then they later realize that the person who have been going with this car, this car that always, whatever are there, is the one who is going to give a devotion when there is a, a, an institutional party. What about if you always come there and load them down? Just say, hi, how have you been? Even you get to know them by name. When you stand that morning to give a devotion there, they connect with you because they know you love them. Sacrifice. We must learn to sacrifice. And allow me to say that the love of Christ the love of God himself is sacrificial. Number two, it is unconditional. We love people not because of what they can do for us or who they are to us or who they're going to become, but we love them unconditionally. Even when they are doing things that are nasty, we love them even when they are 
alcoholics. We love them even when they stole from us. We love them even when they lied to us. We love them even when they betrayed us. We love them even when they don't want to see us. That is the love of Christ. The love of Christ is a condition. You are not loving them because they have become good people. God have loved me with all my weakness. And even when I have failed to be faithful to him and to do what is right, he has continually loved me. God has never loved me because of the best and good things I do. He has loved me unconditionally. Love is eternal. We have to be taught that we should not just love for a season. You have ever heard people say, you see, oh, I've been helping these guys. I've always shown them more the love and whatever. I've realized that they don't, they don't, they don't see if there is anything I'm doing, whatever, whatever. Now, by the way, I feel at a mimi and a choka. Have you ever heard people say, oh, at a sequizi naona ni kama wana itukua kama mi ni mjinga. It's like these guys see us if I'm a fool or whatever. Let me talk to your heart and spirit. If God has taught you to show the works of love, sacrifices you do for people, as you show and demonstrate the love of Christ, do not give up. The love of God is eternal. It is not for a season. It is eternal. Even me and you, we have enjoyed the same love because it has been eternal. May the Lord bless us. May the Lord help us that even now we may be able to understand and know that God desires in his own way that we may be able to become. And this is the part in short. John chapter 15 verses 13. John chapter 15 verse 13. And verse 13 says, Greater love has no, than, no one than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. That is the greatest love that Jesus demonstrated. We can only demonstrate this love that we can lay our lives, sacrifice, Love and conditionary because of others. Because we can only reach out when we love and conditionary, sacrificially, and even eternally. In the name of God the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.